Hello, this is Jason Harrington, and today we'll be doing higher order numerical methods for approximating a difference equation. And this time we're using the Taylor series. And just like before, we're going to have the same ODE that we've had. We're going to have y prime is equal to f of x comma y, so it's a multivariate function. And y is a function of x, so y of x naught is equal to y naught. That's going to be our initial conditions. Now, the one thing you want to remember about all this is that we're still working with our domain. Um, so note our domain D is going to be equal to, oops, our domain D is going to be equal to f of x comma y, and we're going to have our starting x, usually this will be typically x naught is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to our last x that we want to approximate, and our y's can be anything. And this gives us a nice, and this gives us a nice convex set. So if you ever have a question about, do we know that if it has a unique conditional value condition, right? <clears throat> you can always use this as your set. Now, for the Taylor method, here's what I'm going to use. I am going to let phi sub n of x be the exact solution for the initial problem for the ordinary differential equations or ordinary differential equation that we have up here. So I'm going to suppose that this is our exact equation up here with this value. So, i.e., what that tells us is that the derivative of phi sub n prime is going to be equal to f of x comma phi sub n. And phi sub n x sub n is equal to y sub n at each and every step. So if you have n is equal to 0, for example, then this would be x sub naught, and that would be uh, y sub naught part of the solution. All right. Now, the Taylor series. Four phi sub n of x, and I'm going to make this about the point x sub n. All right, so what that's going to look like is you're going to have phi sub n of x is equal to, it's first it's going to be phi sub n, whoops, sorry, cat, x sub n plus the next one is going to be x minus x sub n times the prime of x sub n, that's also n right there, plus h over 2, whoops, I don't want to call it h over n 2 yet, just yet, x minus x sub n over 2 factorial, I'll make this squared, phi of n double prime x sub n plus dot dot dot. Now, like you've seen before, if I say, well, let's let our step, all of our step size be the same, and that's going to be x minus x sub n, then we can simply rewrite this. phi sub n of x is going to be equal to phi sub n of x sub n plus h times phi, sub, uh, phi prime sub n of x sub n plus h over 2 factorial squared phi double prime n x sub n plus dot dot dot. All right, so I just copied that previous formula down. Now, let's see if there's anything you can note here. Now, remember that phi prime is just f of x, right? That's from our original definition. 
So here, remember this is just f of x comma b sub n of x. So then what you have is v sub n of x is equal to v sub n of x sub n plus h times this f of x comma v sub n plus h squared over 2 factorial over phi double prime x sub n plus dot dot dot. Now, if you square at this, or if you stare at this long enough, you're going to notice that this is actually Euler's method, right? It's kind of like uh, the Taylor series. Obviously, the first step is going to be uh, a constant. The second step is a line. And remember, if you approximate the difference equations using lines, then that you get Euler's method. And that's precisely what you've produced at this step here. All right. Now, the next question is, of course, how do we compute this little guy here, right, and the rest of them? Well, let me show you. Since what we want to observe here is that this is a recursive formula for y sub n plus 1. Now, for a better approximation, we'll use terms in the Taylor series that require us to express higher order derivatives of the solution. So, let me just write this out. If y satisfies y prime is equal to f of x comma y, all right, we can compute y double prime by using the chain rule. So what does that look like? So then y double prime is equal to the partial of f with respect to x, x comma y, plus the partial of f with respect to y, x comma y, times y prime. And remember, y prime is f, so that's just going to work out to be y double prime is equal to the partial of f with respect to x. You still have the two variables in there, x comma y, the partial of f with respect to y, x comma y, times, that's going to turn into our function f of x comma y. And this is going to be equal to, I'm going to call this whole thing here, I'm going to call this f sub 2 of x comma y. So that means that the Taylor series looks like this. So this is the recursive formulas. Let me go ahead and change the page on this. So, the recursive formulas for the Taylor series is going to be equal to, step one, we're going to have x sub n plus 1 is equal to x sub n plus h. And then our y sub n plus 1, that's going to be equal to y sub n, and that's just our, our phi, remember, plus h, which is just x minus uh, x sub n, times the, what was the other one, just phi prime, which we said was f, so that's f of x sub n comma y sub n, plus the next term is going to be um, h squared over 2 factorial. And that's going to be phi squared. But remember, you just can use the Taylor series. Or, sorry, not the Taylor series. The chain rule. Just going to use the chain rule for that. And I'm going to call that f sub 2. 
right up sub n comma y sub n and that I'm going to put a reminder here that's gotten from the chain rule plus dot 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 plus um, h to the p over p factorial times f sub p x sub n comma y sub n now remember that this this is going to be kind of hard to do because you're taking the chain rule multiple places but once you do you're completely done I want to make a note here that it can be shown I don't know if we'll have time for this this semester but it can be shown that the Taylor series <clears throat> or the Taylor Taylor series method method of order P has the rate of convergence big O H to the P so let's do an actual example if I said determine the recursive formula for the Taylor's method of order 2 for y prime is equal to sine of xy comma y sub 0 is equal to pi remember if I asked you um, does this have an initial does this have a unique initial conditions you would set up your d to figure out where you want to start and end but for this one I'm just going to actually just give you the uh, formulas that you would need so the first thing you should note here is this is your f of x f of sorry f of x comma y so that's your function and of course we're this says that our x sub naught is equal to zero and that our y sub naught is equal to pi is what that says so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to fix an, an h and I don't know what my h actually is in this case because I don't know what I'm trying to get to but that's okay so I'm going to say let's let h be the standard step size um, and what's neat about this is that there are newer algorithms out there where the h can actually vary depending on the, the equation and how the thing is behaving so you can actually vary the h um, in certain algorithms to make it a little bit more efficient and and more accurate okay so here's our formula formula is going to be x sub n plus 1 that's going to be equal to x sub n plus h and our y sub n plus 1 is going to equal to y sub n plus h times f of x sub n comma y sub n plus h squared over 2 factorial f sub 2 of x sub n comma y sub n now remember and I always think this is neat this is Euler's method so I'll just put a little note around this thing that's gonna be just a little cute little Euler's method just hanging around so the question is now what is this f sub 2 and how do we compute that right so f sub 2 of x comma y is going to equal to the partial of f with respect to x x comma y plus the partial of f with respect to y of x comma y times f of x comma y now first step I'm going to get is the partial of f with respect to x so I'm taking the derivative of this with respect to x so therefore the y is a constant in this case so that's just going to turn into um, y cosine of x y plus and this one the partial derivative of sine of x times y that's going to be x let me write that down that's going to be x cosine 
xy times f, which I remember original f is sine of x times y. So that's going to turn into just sine of x, y. Now, the thing that you want to note here is, is that this is kind of cute. Since they have the same, I can go ahead and just write that whole thing as um, one half sine. So I just rewrite this whole thing here because they have the same insides. So that's just one half sine of 2xy. All right. Now, I'm going to move this up a little bit. So then we see that f sub 2 is of x comma y is really just down to y cosine of x comma y plus x over 2 sine of 2xy. Now you don't have to be that clever and use trig functions, that's okay. Um, the only reason why I think things like that is because, you know, when you program it, you want to try to make it as small as possible, right? But these things don't really won't really hurt us too much if we don't. Now this whole thing, remember, this whole thing is getting substituted inside of this part right there. So now, let's write out our solutions. Okay, so our solutions, whoops. So our solution is, x sub n is equal to x sub n plus h, and our y sub n is going to be equal to y sub n plus h times f of x n comma y sub n plus h over 2 squared, and that's 2 factorial, but 2 factorial is 2, and then I'm just going to put in this f sub 2 right in there. So that's just going to turn into um, y cosine x y plus x over 2 sine of 2xy. And that's it. That's the whole solution. And you can let h vary to see how that affects the solution. Now remember, this, is, this isn't really that, that efficient. So the next thing we're going to see is we're going to overcome the problems with the Taylor series to use what's called the, the Runge-Kuda methods specifically of order four.